Okay, gang. Maybe I've gone completely crazy this time. This is an experiment I've been wanting to try for a while. So, I have a big cutting target, and I have a couple of swords. What on earth are we doing here? I am going to be comparing two swords, our favorite two type of swords, longsword and katana. Now, this is a variation on the fire axe test. So this is a type of test where all I'm interested in is cutting potential. So I'm going to be swinging relatively hard, and I want to see how far into the target I can cut. So I have this archery target set up here, standing vertically, and I have it graduated every 10 centimeters so that I can see how far down each target is going to, uh, each sword will be able to cut into the target. And then I have graduated along each sword 10 centimeters. And what I'd like to see is I'd like to do repeated cuts approximately every 10 centimeters along the sword. So I'll start off shallow, cutting right here at the fort of the sword, and then I'll back up and I'll cut a little deeper, and I'll cut a little deeper, and I'll cut a little deeper all the way to the tip. And I expect that there's going to be an area where the sword cuts best, and it will not cut as well here because I'm not getting as big of a swing, and I might not cut as well here just because of the geometry of the sword. So there's going to be a combination between both acceleration and leverage as well as how the sword is shaped. Now, that's talking about the long sword, but a katana is built very differently. A katana has a lot of cutting power even all the way out here at the end, and I'd really like to see how these two swords are going to compare. Now, I've tested this before. There's plenty of things that can go wrong. I am going to be cutting with machine-like precision, so I'm sure that that will not be a variable at all. But uh, the rig can move a little bit. It's possible I'll cut through my bungees and the whole thing will explode. I did test it once before just to show that the whole thing wouldn't collapse, but anything is possible. This is absolutely has the opportunity to, for failure. So this is, from an engineering standpoint, has lots of opportunities for error, but we'll still test it and just see what happens. This will again be an exploratory analysis. So um, going into it, how are the edges? The katana is quite sharp, and if we test my Albion Mercenary here, let's take a look. Here's some paper just to, to test. Everything is blowing in the wind. The Albion seems to be quite sharp as well. You know, test it again just to, to be sure. Everything is blowing away from me. It's a good thing that my rig is robust. All right, so we're, we're quite sharp on, on both the katana and the, the Albion. All right, so I'm going to start with the longsword. And then worst comes to worst, I can just flip the whole thing upside down and switch over to the katana. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, mercenary up first. We're starting as uh, shallow as possible. So the first mark is the 10 centimeter mark. It's crazy to chop this shallow. So I missed the 10 centimeter mark and I hit closer to the 20 centimeter mark and we went in about 15 centimeters, 14 centimeters. Yeah, I hit at 15 right there. All right, so we made 35 or so, and pretty much the same distance. So 15 for the first, I skipped 20, skipped 30, and went up to about 35. So I'm gonna aim for 40 now. Hit 40 pretty much dead on, and once again, hit 15. So this is very consistently about 15 with maybe very slightly more for that 45. Going to hit at the 50 mark now. All right, I missed my 50 mark slightly and I hit at 45 again. So we'll try the 50 mark one more time. Boom. 
hit the 50 mark. Slightly shallower, about 13 centimeters. Going to the, to the uh, 60 mark. Sixty mark, about the same, thirteen centimeters. It was really not quite sixty mark, so unsurprising there. Uh, about fifteen centimeters, and we're all the way out at the sixty-five mark or so. And I can probably get one more cut. I'll try and cut all the way over here at eighty. I cut pretty much right at 80, I uh, hit cut at 75. Now, let me see if, I don't think I'll be able to get the light on here, but almost all of these cuts are right at the same level. They're all within like two or three centimeters of each other, which suggests to me, this is more about the cutting medium than about the type of sword. So the sword and its geometry are all cutting, piercing this, and it's being slowed down at about the same rate and going in. So my force is probably very consistent. And it's after it cuts the initial medium, it's just the friction of how wide the blade is. It's just letting it go through and go through and go through and slowly being slowed down all at approximately the same rate. Going to be curious to see if the cross section of the katana does the same thing. Let's flip it around. Now, with the katana, I flipped around the target, and the target isn't perfectly square, so, um, or I shouldn't say it's not perfectly 60 centimeters, so there's an extra two centimeters here at the top that I'll have to add on to the graduated lines, if you see. Okay, katana time. Starting at 10 centimeters. Whew, gotta cut shallow. All right, so I cut at about 14 centimeters of length on the blade, just like the other one. I'm just not used to cutting that shallow. Um, but we cut right at around the 12 centimeter mark, because I have to add on the little extra bit. All right, switching to 20. All right, I hit 20 pretty much right on and cut to about 13 centimeters. Going to 30. Um, 14 centimeters. So we're creeping up about one centimeter each time. Up to 40 centimeters. So we're starting to cut in the Mono Uchi area. Up oh, 10, 20, 30, 40. There we go. All right. That time we cut it cut decidedly further, so we're going to cut like uh, 15, 16 centimeters. <sighs> Didn't quite make it all the way to 14 that time, uh, or 40 centimeters, only did 35 centimeters. So we'll try and cut closer to 50 centimeters. And once again, cut right about 15 centimeters. Cut a little short. So we'll try and jump all the way to 60, but I'll probably get closer to 70 again, knowing my consistency. All right, so that one was right at 15 centimeters and um, hit right at 60, so let me try 70 again. Uh, 
and that one hit once again right at mm, 14 or 15. Okay, so I'm not even going to put up numbers, I don't think, because the medium here is very, very, con so either I have a much more consistent swing than I was expecting, or um, the medium is not um, fine enough for me to be able to suss out the type of effect that I'm looking for. What's happening is every time I swing, I'm able to pierce the surface of the target, and the sword is going through, and it's building up drag. And this is something that you find with a lot of synthetic materials. So for instance, this is the reason why uh, ballistics gel is not very similar to cutting through human targets. Um, it's, it, it's debatable as to its utility for seeing the effect on guns. But a lot of people say, hey, you know, why don't you pick up a ballistics target, a ballistics dummy, and try and cut? Um, trying to cut through human flesh, humans are weak, uh, are uh, wet on the inside. And the skin has a lot of resistance. And after you finally manage to cut through the skin, the inside of a human has almost no resistance unless you hit a bone uh, because the, the fleshy components, the subcutaneous tissue, the, the, um, the muscle, all of that is all self-lubricating and very, very wet. And the blade will just glide right through it. Imagine cutting through raw chicken. Um, that's the opposite of things like ballistics, gelatin. If you push your blade through it, the longer you're traveling through the gelatin, the slower and slower and slower the blade go uh, goes because you're encountering more and more and more friction as you're uh, going deeper and deeper into the target. And that seems to be what's happening here. So unfortunately, um, this target is really cool and it's really interesting, but it doesn't seem to be giving me the sort of information I was hoping on, it seems to be slowing down the swords, regardless of where along the sword I'm cutting, at about the same rate, even between the types of swords. These swords aren't different enough to really see much of an impact. In each case, whenever I swing, around 15 centimeters after the blade breaks the surface of the target, it's stopping the sword. And the variation I'm seeing is so small, it's gonna be within the standard error of all the things that I have built into my rig. So it's interesting, but I don't think that there is uh, anything that I can pull out of it with the current target and with the current setup I have. So this is an area, this is again, this is science. This is how we work. This was an exploratory sort of experiment. And I have more information than I did before. I still think that there's something worth seeing here I will say I'm impressed with the longsword. I think that the longsword showed that it can cut further out than I was expecting. I was not expecting to do as well as it did uh, with its ability to cut near the tip. Um, but that said, I suspect that there is still a difference between the two just because if I'm going ahead and cutting through bottles and I try and cut with the longsword out at the end, it will not cut very well through the bottle whereas I, I have to cut you know, in, in the uh, kind of center of percussion area. Whereas with the katana, I have no problem cutting through the, the uh, tip, through the kasaki area, through a bottle, because it has a lot of fierce cutting power uh, out here in, in the tip. So, experiment, not the outcome I was hoping for, but we still did learn something. All right, katana versus longsword will be revisited in the future. Until next time, guys, take care.